Welcome back to AATD. I'm your host, Tom Amble Hibbard. Today, we're going to talk all about admin in the field at Milsim. So I did want to do this at the Descent Milsim, however, I was too busy and it was far too wet to be running camera equipment. So we've come out to the local woods and we're going to go through, as I said in the intro, almost how to admin yourself in the field whilst at Milsim. So if you're in a fob or a fixed site with a roof over your head, slightly different. However, we're in the field here in our lovely local woods, Gadge. Yep, helping out here today. Didn't make it to Descent, I'm afraid, but I'm here now. Um, and we'll just run through just how to look after yourself, how to stay comfortable, how to stay warm, how to stay dry, how to eat and drink, and how to make sure you're ready to go when you get a task. Right, so I've showed you my travel and my setup down at Descent, which is the hammock setup we showed you in our Milsim sleeping video game. Yep. And it was excellent. I was warm, dry, extremely comfortable. I was very happy with that. Today we've just slung a basher up with a bit of ground sheet just to keep us bit of overhead cover and something to, something to sit on while we're here. I would also always take my little multi-mat pad, super lightweight, and I can just sit on that and just keep my bum a bit warmer. Have you got one of those, Gadge? I have indeed. Mine's bright pink, though. <laughs> no, it's, it's actually bright green, so I can see it when I'm trying to stand at night. And so it's excellent bit of kit, and I highly recommend something like that. I'll just cut down a bit of roll mat or just something to keep the bum off the ground already. I'm a lot warmer. It's a little different. So it's a really simple little thing you can have in your pack. So we ran through quite a lot of the kind of admin stuff when I packed, how everything was waterproofed or even double waterproofed and how I had a system about getting stuff out. Yeah. Again, that worked really well. There wasn't much I took that I didn't use. And the stuff that I didn't use was the things I doubled up on anyway, like radio batteries and stuff like that. Radio batteries well, that's that. a trial and error thing. You first few milsons I went to, I took the kitchen sink. Trouble has got, I don't need that, I don't need that. I don't take a spare gun, I take a spare between two people now because the odds of you both having your gun go down really slim and you'll thin your kit down with time. Yeah, so I ended up going down on the train. Um, the vehicle I was going to travel down in was just way too small. So I didn't take my webbing and I didn't take my rifle. But for the purpose of this video, let's just assume I did take my rifle and I did take my webbing. Come back from an op gadge. Yep. The first thing I need to find out is from my team leader what the situation is. Yep. How much time do I have? What's our next tasking? If he knows, what am I free to be able to do? Because you don't be halfway through a scoff and they're shouting, move out, move out, move out. Yeah, you could be on a five minute QRF and you suddenly set yourself up to cook, you cook yourself 
a big old dinner. It's just not going to work. So let's just assume I've been told I can stand down for 20 minutes, which gives me enough time to get some food and a scoff in. However, the first thing we need to do is bomb up. So reload grenades, big priority of course. Any expended magazines need to be filled, gassed if necessary, bombed up. Pyro sorted out. If you've used pyro, get your spare pyro out, put it back in your load bearing kit. Get yourself ready to go at a moment's notice, and that's and your first priority. New battery and new gun for a lot of people. I mean, my I use very small uh, lipos on mine. I can run two or three hours of play, then I need to change it. So if you're halfway through your meal and you haven't done any of your bombing up admin, leaving you guys in the shit and we don't want to do that. Yeah, indeed. I mean, I've seen people running out of the QRF with pouches wide open, kit falling out of them. By the time they get there, half the kit's down the lane because they're not prepped. So let's just run through what we would do coming back from patrol. We've got instructions from our team leader. We know we've got roughly 20, 30 minutes to sort ourselves out. Just bombed up. Now we're going to have a scoff and a broom. Make sure we've got some fueling in. It's really important to keep loading up on calories through the day. If you get a chance. There's other minor admin as well, so as well as getting that out, I'd be doing things. I've been wearing a bandage on my arm, I'd be folding it up, putting it back in my first aid pouch. Just those little things, right? Because normally, if I take the bandage, I'll stuff it in the pocket and that's done. But I want it to be where it needs to be for that game. Anything I've used in the game and I've taken out and hurriedly put away somewhere, it needs to go back where it should be. Then I'll start eating personally. Really good points. Okay, so bandages back, notes made, be sure of your timings, bombed up. Then you can start looking after yourself. I'm going to be operating out of my mostly out of my webbing. You may have a different system depending on what load bearing gear you're going to be using. I'm only going to open, as Gash says, one pouch at a time. And when that pouch has been opened, I'm going to close it again. Which means if we do get a QRF, I can just go and we're not throwing stuff everywhere. When it's all in front of you, it's what we used to call in the army an admin bomb. And you can see it when people are disorganised because there's literally stuff everywhere and they're faffing around and it's untidy, it's wasteful, it takes time, it takes energy. Just do things bit by bit. So, now we talked about this again in the food episode gadge, about how we want to eat fast and clean. So if I was cooking stuff up on a big gas cooker and using loads of ingredients, one, it's an admin bomb, yeah. and two, it's going to take more time. So we're going to use today British Army rations, do something similar or commercial variety. It just means we can do stuff fast. It's tasty-ish and nutritious. Okay. Yeah. It's also... It's also a really good idea to know how long your cooking means takes. Yeah. So jet boil, less than five minutes to get a ration pack, probably edible. Uh, using a hexamine stove, you could be looking at your whole 20 minutes just to get that water boiling and get that ration pack for a nice, warm consistency. You're doing it over an open fire, you won't have time in 30 minutes. So the other thing is, generally, if you disappear off to your tent in a separate camping area, it's a nightmare to dig people out. So try and stay reasonably near the CP or your command point, so your team leader knows where you are, how to get to you, you're not decided to go for a snooze in your sleeping bag. It's also the best one in the world, if you're out of that game area, it's very tempting to switch off, you get your phone out, you look at Facebook, somebody else is there and you talk about what was on Walking Dead last night or whatever you've been watching, and all of a sudden you're not there in that soldier mindset, and the airsoft mindset, you're actually just going, oh it's a nice day in the woods, I can't be bothered, I'm feeling a bit slowed down after food, try and stay in that game zone, I'm terrible for it, I have to make myself stay switched on all the time. Okay, first thing, so I'm going to get my jet foil out. It's in my pouch, my webbing staying near me again, so I can pick it up at any point, and my weapon would also be near me as well. All this stuff, I'm not using, goes back in the pouch. It's interesting as well, you kept your most common drink in with your jet boil, so you don't have to open another pouch. No, so that, if I just want to brew, I'm done. Now I run two water bottles in my webbing gadge. Yeah. My leftmost one is the one I normally drink from. When I'm out in the field, my right one is the one I was cooking. Yeah. I've got a hand and a weapon, it's obviously much harder to get to that one. I can get to this one one handed. It's interesting to note, Tom, to a lot of guys, and myself included, like camelbacks when you're actually skirmishing or playing, but take a water bottle because you cannot cook with the contents of a camelback. I, don't like, I really don't like camelbacks. I like to know how much I've drunk. Um, so I might use a, use a bladder for water storage because it's convenient, but I would then refill my bottles and drink out my bottle. But I, each to own. So that's water bottle is done. That goes back in. Again, pouch done up. The more you do it, the easier it gets. Hopefully this will ignite. And the pin zone. And the lid on. Just helps speed up the cooking a bit. So whilst there's that on, we can get the rest of our prep done. I have a snack meal in my webbing gadge that yep. I can eat cold if I want. I've got a tomato pasta salad. So oh, because we're in camp, I'm going to have one of my meals out of my bag. So again, that illustrates the principle we've said before in previous videos. Your immediate stuff to fight or play airsoft with is on your webbing. So you've got 
some snacks, your ammo, your bandages, etc. Some food, just enough for a quick meal. But actually, your long-term survival stuff for the weekend is actually in the day sack. Then you've got your choices, your options, your full menus. So my boil in the bag meal goes straight in the water, top on. I can then put the rest of my day's meals to leave in camp. Back in my Bergen in my patrol pack. Whilst that's going on, I'm going to get my brew ready. So underneath my other water bottle pouch, I've got the plastic mug I used to drink from. Coffee sachet. Now this is the Nescafe. I like these Nescafe three in one. They're not. It's not the best coffee. It's actually pretty rubbish, but it's super convenient. It's already got the milk and the sugar mixed in. And again, as we talked about, it's faster, much less fat thing. You do get coffee and creamers and sugar in the ration pouches. Just find these a lot easier. They're also done for a mug size, whereas like a normal mug size, where a lot of the ration pack uh, tea, coffee, chocolate proportions tend to be for the much larger mug. And I end up throwing away half the chocolate because I just don't use it. You savage. Absolute <laughs> savage. It's the best bit. <laughs> you have a gash bag, put it away. I'm just going to put this in my smock. We don't want to leave stuff lying around. So at any point now, Andy can run over and go, Tom, Tom, we've got to go. And all you're wasting really is some hot water. Yep. But the pouch could go in my pocket for food. Water. Go in your thermos. Straight in my thermos flask. There you go. So if we do get on a QRF, we're on a five minute or two minute. Make the brew in the flask. Flask can come with me. Pouch can just go in my pocket straight away. So we're ready to go. Pouch is all closed off. Everything I need immediately in front of me. Webbing's ready to go. Weapon's ready to go. And I'm bombed up. And then we're also going to leave it to steep for a little bit. Otherwise you get a bit of a lukewarm meal. And the worst thing is when you get them lukewarm on one side and cold on the other. <laughs> you squish them together. Yeah. So if you start opening an oven door, guys, you kick yeah. the top off. It uh, gets colder. Gets colder. Yeah. Well, I think I think that'll do. <laughs> That's the cooking indicator. Then <laughs> bag rises, turn off heat. But I've still got my smock on. Obviously, I have my combat trousers ready to go. And I think that's kind of one of the messages we want to get across here is during the day, just be ready to go at a moment's notice. It's also worth noting you've kept your iPro on. Obviously, we're in a public park, so I'm not wearing iPro. But again, usually if I'm at a Milson, I don't take mine off at all. I've also modified my bush hat gadget. So yeah. So it's less. It's a bit more alley. It's more alley, but much less useful. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing I, I touched on in the packing video, Gadget, is I've got. Lots of stuff lanyarded onto me at the moment. So my compass is lanyarded on, so yep. I don't lose it. I've got my whistle, which is in this pocket. I've got my pocket knife in that pocket. I've also got, <laughs> if I needed a lighter, I've got one in this pocket as well. So everything's ready to go, and I'm not going to lose it. Back, back in the day, on my old sort of DPM smock, everything was lanyarded on, because otherwise it just went walking. If you didn't lose it, someone would punch it. It's quite lovely to see quite how many people had stuff lanyarded on <laughs> when I got to the event. They kept pulling things out of their pockets with lanyards on. Um, but it does make a big difference. You know, if I if the piezo, piezo lighter goes on my jet bar and I can't light it and I've lost my lighter, always have a backup, but you might not have that backup and you'll be pretty sorry. Although it's always worse not going crazy on backups. I have been known in the past to have a backup for the backup for the backup and then you get to that back-breaking level where you carry way too much stuff and you never use it. Well one is none and two is one gadget. There you go. There we go. So I think we're pretty much ready. This is steeped for a bit. You got a brew? I have mate. A mug. I will get it now so, in my disorganised bag. I brought this way to show you how not to do it. So what you don't want to be doing is going oh no oh no oh no where's my mug? There's my mug. As Gash says, these can come out a bit cold on one side and hot on the other. So it's worth giving them a little bit of a massage. Okay, put them in one of those. And then, yeah, there you go. Stop you burning your hands. <laughs> right, so I've just massaged it a bit, spread the heat out. That's ready to go. You can just pop that in your pocket while you're waiting doing other stuff. Why not help keep it warmer? And so, again, if you get a QRF call or a task ink, you've got it on you. You can eat it later. So that goes in my pocket while well, I'm going to sort the brews out for both of us. Guy's just going to make up a little brew for himself. Some water there, buddy. Cool. Yep, and that's important. You want to work in pairs, so there's no point both of us sitting there staring at a jet boil, wasting that 20 minutes we've got. Actually, if there's two of us, we haven't got 20 minutes between ops. We've got 40 minutes. 
I could be sorting out the, the weapons, the batteries or whatever. I could be giving things a quick clean, putting a barrel swab through, etc. Tom could be sorting out the food and drink. Uh, watch out for each other. In some games, if you're in a tactical type situation, you're doing a quick draw up and a lower basher, one of you might have to actually be watching out for the enemy at one point because you're actually in game area while brewing up. So I'm a great fan of these Swedish folding cups because they hold about a third of what they hold, but I don't like to drink too much in one go. Oh, see, I like a big old brew, so it mm -hmm. works out fine. And I'm going to leave a little bit of water left in there just to swill the cups out after we're done. Everything's ready to go. Again, I'm going to hit load at this point. And then we can have a brew and a scoff. And we can go at a moment's notice. You see, well, in an airsoft game, you very rarely get messed about for the fun of it. But when you're in the actual military and you're learning and you're doing your basic training, they absolutely delight in letting you stop, getting your brew on, do that admin bomb, get your kit everywhere, and then making you move out at a moment's notice just to mess with you. So you kind of get used when you've been doing it for real yep. to being very, very organised. I never, a... never normally do it like that. That's literally me throwing things in the bag to show people how not to do it. Well, we had a number of quick QRFs at the weekend where people were halfway through cooking, were having a brew on, and we had to get them moving fast. So it can happen, you've got an airsoft Right, so the last bits of admin. I've washed my cup out. Yep. I'm going to make some more jet boil. Let's get that out of the way. I'm going to get the jet boil away now. Packed up again. So that's my scoff and my brew all done. Sorted. And that's some personal admin gadgets. Yeah, so if I've got... 15 minutes left before we go out, you know, got a bit of time. If I've been out wearing cam cream or insect repellent, I might reapply that, especially cam cream on a hot day when it sweats off or wears off. Um, if it's a, again, if it's a hot or a cold day, I might say I need an extra layer. Yep. Uh, because I'm shivering out there or I've got so hot and sweaty that basically my t-shirt's sticking to me. Rather than be uncomfortable for the next two hours of playing, I'll admin it then if I've got time. Obviously, you don't want to be changing all your kit and messing your mates around because you're having a fashion parade. Yep. But at the same time, it doesn't hurt to basically bang on a bit more cam cream or maybe take off that Norgy or whatever you're wearing at the start of the day when it's freezing when you did all the sign-in and set-up. You know? yep. Something I wanted to talk about, Gedge, was kind of your nighttime routine. Yep. Um, some milsoms go through the night, but you might well have a longer period of standing down. And there's no point in going to bed sweaty or cold and just having a miserable time. Yep. So you may as well put a set of dry clothes on. Yep. Now, dry clothes could be some sleeping kit. Probably better off having a spare combat uniform or something on the Get away clothes. with a, I don't know, a, a green or grey tracksuit, but really I'd want a spare set of combat. Yeah, and then if you, take, if you do tear your primary set, you've got a spare yeah. set anyway. But it's worth keeping them dry so you can stay comfortable. And it was really important at the weekend just gone, where everyone got pretty soaking on the Sunday and Saturday. So on a weekender, you can get away with that dry kit being your kit for day two. It's cleaner, it's nicer. If you're doing longer events, and it's very rare, but some European milsons might run for three or yep. four days at a time, that wet kit is your day kit. And in the morning, no matter how unpleasant it is, you take your dry kit off, you seal it back in its bags, put your wet kit back on. It all sounds very SAS, I know, but it's actually really practical to do that. So, I would take a dry bag like this one. This is an expert dry bag or canoe bag. And conveniently, this one has both a window, yep. and it's coloured differently on the inside and the outside. So what I did, Gadge, is my dry kit went in the inside on the white bit. Yep. I then, when I changed into it, I turned it inside so out, out. Yep. and the blue side, or the wet side, my wet kit Makes sense. went into here. Now if you've got a chance to hang up your wet kit, do that. You may not have that chance, you just may not have that space underneath your basher or underneath your hammock or underneath your tarp. In which case, just shove it in. You can then use that as a pillow, at least vaguely keep it warm. And this is the other reason though why you should know, when we talked about packing your bergen properly, what you don't want to be doing is wandering around with white lights, trying to find things in the dark, faffing around. You should know exactly where everything is. So you should be able to get all your kit together to go to bed at night, wash yourself, I don't know, take your contacts out, put your glasses back on, whatever you've got to do without ruining everybody else's night vision by putting your 2,000 lumen torch in there. Yes, yeah. and, the and then the other point, in the morning, other way around, the dry kit, it's inside the dry bag, that's yeah. why I quite like the two-colour dry bag. Good idea. Seal that back up again, so you know that's nice and dry, and you're sorted. Okay, that's really, really useful, and that worked a treat at the weekend. Nearly all my kit is in canoe bags as well. Um, as Gash says, light discipline is quite important at night. It's not just because you can give away your position to the enemy. As you, as you mentioned, Gash, people went out on night ops and they need to keep their night vision. It's also, if people are trying to sleep, 
you don't really want a bright white light being shone in their eyes. It's yeah. really difficult as it is with lots of people, lots of noise. It penetrates tarpaulins and tents. Yeah. You know. So a little red light. There were people without a red light. A little red light, whether it be a handheld or a head torch like this one that has red light and a white light, super useful. You can see enough to admin yourself, get dressed, whatever, without waking people up from their sleep. So absolutely recommend a nice little head torch and some spare batteries. And, also, and as Gash says, know where that is, don't go rooting through your, if you had to root through your kit with a, with a light on to find your light, it's really not gonna help very much. Now, the most important thing I can stress here as part of your nighttime admin, know where the latrines or the loo area is. <laughs> Nothing more annoying than someone stumbling to the entire camp in the dark trying to find somewhere where they can go for a wee. If you can't find it easily, get the group to put a comms cord out from the basher area that runs out of your woodland harbour area into an area where it's okay to go for a whittle because no one wants their tent weed on and no one wants you crashing back into their tent at three in the morning because you will need to get up for a wee in the middle of the night if you're our age. It's going to happen, right? Inevitable. Right, in the morning. So we've woken up in the morning. Generally, you'll be up before first light. Yeah. So we're up at 5.30, 6 o'clock on the weekend. Again, red lights, be nice and quiet. Don't wake people who may have a longer opportunity to sleep, particularly drivers who really do need to stay pretty cognizant throughout the day. Have your kit ready to go. So don't have your stuff scattered. Make sure you know where your breakfast is. You know where your cooker is. Everything's sorted, everything's quick. You don't have to worry about it too much. There will be a temptation in the morning to put every item of clothing you have on, including that dry kit, because it's cold. Don't. Unless you're going to go down with hypothermia, stay in that wet kit, stay in your field kit. Also remember that while it's cold where you're having your breakfast and you're getting your briefing, in an hour's time you're going to be running around with your AG, with your helmet on, whatever, you're going to get hot really fast. Yeah. So I've got my warm kit in this canoe bag. I've just got a British Army softy, a warm hat and a shemag. I can chuck that on in the morning while I'm getting ready, keep myself nice and warm, or if I get cold at night. And then again, I can go back in that canoe bag, back in my pack, yeah, a, a surplus softy or some sort of like down type jacket you can slip on at those times is much better than putting a set of thermals on because you just, it's a nightmare to get rid of your thermals in the middle of the game. So that works really well. And again, if I'm out patrolling, I can put that warm kit into a small patrol pack and take it with me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, along with my, along with, if we're going out for a longer time, take a basho and a bit of food. But keep everything nice and small and compact and be able to move stuff around. A bit. Right, so we touched on this in a packing video. So what I did, I took, uh, my travel wash kit and some wet wipes. So at the end of the day gadge, I could just do all my cracks effectively. So anything like that. We didn't give myself a massive um, clean up, but clean my pits, my bits, my last crack, my feet with separate wet wipes. Tapped my feet down to get them nice and dry, gave them a good rub and a massage. Put a fresh pair of socks on and got into bed. Felt brilliant. Yeah, I have a wash roll for the same things. I have an old 80s ammo bandolier that has my contact lens stuff in one section. Yeah. It has a flannel wrapped around soap in another one. It has a razor and some shaving soap in another. So yeah. Shaving oil is really good actually if you want to shave. I, I personally find it quite refreshing to shave before the next day of a meal. So some, some guys don't mind it. Me, I like to wash and shave like that. And I have a toothbrush and toothpaste. But I use a travel toothbrush, yeah. travel toothpaste, and I cut a toothbrush in half. Yeah, I've got, um, so I've got a massive toothbrush sticking out all over. I've got a set of bottles from my kit. Get yeah. little travel bottles and just can stuff into them. Uh, really useful. You'll feel much better. You'll feel much cleaner. It's much healthier. Especially if you've got cam cream all over you. That stuff some particular brands harvest boils and zits really yeah, really badly really so getting point. it all off the at the end of the, day, of the night the end, yeah, the night, get your cam cream off um i would do that you'll feel much better with, with fresh put fresh pants on at the beginning of the day put fresh socks on at the beginning of the day look after your feet you'll be absolutely gold and you feel much better there's no point being a grot bag and on the way home you won't be in the motorway services stinking everyone else out yeah. the big thug in the car as well on that note as well well if you've got the space for it it's obviously when you're traveling on the train you can't do this I will quite often take a clean spare t-shirt, maybe a pair of, sort of like combat trousers or whatever, so I can travel home not in kit. Because one, it's cleaner, it feels better. Secondly, you don't look like a massive dickhead standing in McDonald's services yep. in all your kit with someone going, oh, thank you for your service, and you're going, oh, just bite your ass off. Well, this coming weekend, I, I travelled down in Civic kit um, with the Big Bergen, which everyone thought was in the military anyway, which was a bit embarrassing, and the pub I stopped off at. Um, and I had, my, I had had my combat kit, so I only had two sets of kit, my Civic kit. And my combat kit. I did have, as you say, a spare t-shirt, spare pair of pants, so I travelled back looking reasonably sensible. And my dry kit was my civic kit and my wet kit was my... Do you know what, kit. Tom? Actually, you're hitting nail on the head there. For anybody who does want to go walting, you probably have more luck at convincing yourself you're a soldier by wearing decent outdoors kit while you travel around rather than wearing full camouflage. And a big red, 
in a big, big burgundy. There were some nice old ladies in the pub, and they were convinced I was I was in the army, and they would not believe that was it was oh. quite funny. So thanks for watching this episode on Milsim admin. I'll look in it or looking after yourself in the field. Thanks to Gadge for coming along. It's been a pleasure. And helping out in this lovely, actually very lovely day in the woods. Quite enjoying it. If you'd like to help support the channel, we run a Patreon scheme. You can also, if you like audiobooks, join Audible. Try them out for 30 days at no cost. You can buy one of our fantastic t-shirts. Most importantly, like, share, subscribe to the videos, stay safe, and we'll see you soon. He's uh, well known. He sometimes he does play with the dogs in dog suits. But... We've got a Russian spy, otherwise known as an Alsatian. Welcome to Beast and Shouting Club, where people walk dogs and shout a lot.